Just no. No, This smile is Oh, no. No, because that is Okay, you know what? Stop talking. It's
Huh? Can you uh, zoom out a little and start? Okay. Hello? What's a combo? Hello? Hello? Hi. I can hear now. <laughs> can you go slowly? It's, it's too fast. get there. Oh, yeah, never mind. Oh, it's I'm just going to draw my own dinosaur. Yeah. Is Betsy's audio working? I can hear you, Frank, but I cannot hear Betsy. I will give her a quick message. I did too. No. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh my gosh, all that time and nobody could hear me. I was just talking to myself. I'm sorry about that, guys. It's so, all right. Let's go ahead and finish the soccer ball. And then if you guys want to practice any of this stuff that I was doing before <laughs> you could hear me, we can definitely go back and do that. So if you've got your circle, I'm Michaela. Oh. And you've got your kind of curvy pentagon and kind of your spider legs hanging off. We're going to put another pentagon on the end of each of these lines, but they're going to be a little more squished. Those are right on the edge of the ball there. I'm just going to fill them in so you can see what it looks like. You guys can draw more slowly. Don't worry about it. Well, I think that's about as far as I can go. I'll color them in so you can see them a little better. Oh, and Betsy. Yeah. I finally figured out how to how I finally downloaded Metabang Paint Pro to my computer. I Very figured cool. out Yeah, I figured out how the cloud works. So if I download to the cloud, you know how the cloud works. It, this is gonna be cool. Well, good to hear. If it turns out to be a better program than Fire Alpaca, we might switch over. So then between each of these pentagons that you drew down here, it's going to be the same thing. They're going to have lines that come out. So these are going to connect to each other. This one you probably won't see because it's wrapping around the ball. But if you have any on the ball that you can see, you're going to go ahead and connect them up. And of course, if you don't want to make it a soccer ball, you rather have a bas uh, yeah, basketball or a volleyball, go for it. That's something you can totally change. I mean, you just want to make it a red ball. Just make it red. It's fine. Any kind of ball you want. So since you guys couldn't hear me before, we'll go ahead and draw the head again, just because that's kind of an important part. So I'm just going to flip my practice paper over and we'll go through those steps again. Let me back up a little bit and brighten my camera. Oh, maybe not that bright. So we're going to just start with a circle, light and loose. If you feel like you can't draw a circle, go ahead and grab something like cylinder shape. I don't even know what this is, some kind of thing. And you can just trace around it. That's fine. I find it easier just to draw it by myself. Once you have your sort of circular shape, we'll go ahead and add on this kind of a beak that this particular dinosaur has for nipping leaves off of branches. And to do that, we're just going to pretend it's a slide and you're coming up and then sliding down. So 
So that only gets us down to the green part. Then we're going to reverse it and do the gray part. And then we'll do that kind of in reverse, where we're going to start from the tip and start with a line that's like a frown going up until we get to about the circle again. And then as you can see on this one, we flip it around and make it a smile. And then you can put a line to separate the beak part from the green part. And then we just need to draw the bottom part of the mouth. So we'll just take one big curvy line and go all the way back to the circle. And we need one more line in there to separate the green from the gray. And then we'll go ahead and start working on this cool part of his head. This is Pachycephalosaurus, the one that has a great big dome on his head surrounded by little spikes. So we'll start with a little spike down here, leaving some space for his big dome head. We'll do another one, maybe point it a little more upward and round it off. And then if there's a spike that's pointing right at you, it just turns into a circle. It's kind of like the tip of your pencil. If you look at it this way, it's pointy. But as it comes toward you, toward you, toward you, toward you, it just turns into a circle or kind of a, what is it, a hexagon? A little angle, but it loses its point because the point is pointing right at you. So I'm just going to stick in a circle right there. And if you want to add more spikes than me, that's fine. It's your dinosaur. You do what you want. But there's four big ones on the back. They look kind of like ice cream cones just stuck right into his head here. So I'm going to put a bigger spike on the back. We'll round off the bottom just like an ice cream cone. Take your eraser and you can erase anything that's inside that shape. You can also erase your circle if you want to. Then this one on the other side, we're only going to see a little bit of it. Smaller. And then we've got two more below that. So we're going to do the same thing. Ice cream cone. And a smaller one because it's on the other side. And then around each of these spikes, just to make it a little more 3D, I've got these little curved lines on either side to show kind of the bump of the skin, kind of like on your fingernails where there's a little bit of a bump before it goes from your skin to your fingernail. That's kind of what we're doing here too. We're going to put little bumps, little curved lines on the sides of our spikes. 
round one, two. And then we just need to add the eye. So this one, he has his eyes closed as he's bopping this soccer ball off of his head. But if you want to make his eyes open, you can do that. For my dinosaurs that have their eyes open, I've been using an oval eye. So just do a squished oval there and leave a little bit at the top white. And then I just color in the rest. You can give it eyelashes if you want. Whoop. Maybe three, like Minnie Mouse. Or you can leave it as it is, that's fine. Or you can do the closed eye, that's fine. Whatever you like, it's your drawing, you do it. Now we're going to go ahead and put all of this practice together to draw our dinosaur with the soccer ball bouncing off of his head. And a new piece of paper. If you've got space on your paper, you just want to turn it over, that's fine. And I want to make sure that I have enough room on my paper to fit my whole dinosaur. So I'm going to look at how big he is, maybe about the size of my hand, put my hand on my paper and go, okay, he's going to be about that big, no bigger than that. Make some marks. Actually, I need room for the soccer ball too, so I'm going to bring his head down a little bit more. So leave lots of room at the top for the soccer ball and start his head a little bit lower on the paper. That's that same circle, maybe a little bit bigger than a quarter. You can go around and around and around. Erase anything you don't like. We'll do the exact same thing like before. We have to put on that beak. So we'll have a little curve, a little slide that goes right off and then curves the other way. The longer you make the nose, the more like it'll look like an adult. And if you make it short, it'll look like a baby. So that's up to you. Then from the tip, I'm going to curve up until I get to the circle. Looks like a bird beak at first. Then we'll curve it up. And end with a little crossbar, a little bit like the letter T. We'll separate off the color. Just like before. And just like before, we'll use a curved line to go from the circle to right underneath his mouth there. Same thing again, I'm going to separate 
the tip of his mouth from the rest of his head. And we can erase the circle that's on the inside. We don't need that anymore. We're going to stop right there on the head for now so that we can start drawing in the body. First thing we're going to need is a neck. And for the neck, I'm going to go right around my circle and just extend it out a little bit. To the back of the neck. And then for this front part, you can see it's a little wrinkly. We've got our main curve here, but we're going to stop before we hit the back of the neck and add another little line, just like a sideways letter Y, and erase that in there. And from the middle of this line, I'm going to start another line coming down, and that's this one right here to make the chest. Lightly, lightly, we're going to erase some of this later. And I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm going to go all the way down until I get to the tail. Then for the back, We've got a couple of different lines too. We've got the neckline is going to stop a little bit by the chest. So as I come down here, I'm going to stop. That'll indicate some of the shoulder. Then I'm not going to start here. Don't start here, down here. We're gonna come right back up here and start the back. Do a bump. And then go down, 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 skinny into a tail. So these lines are kind of come closer together, closer together, closer together. And after you have your first shape, you might want to change some things. You might think, oh, my tail's too short. Don't erase it. Don't erase it yet. Draw your new tail first. I go, you know, I really want my tail to be longer and a little more up like that. Draw it first and then get rid of the lines you don't want. I don't know why it happens, but a lot of times when you have something, let's say here's your body and you go, oh, I want my tail longer. I want my tail longer than that. So what happens is you'll erase it and then you'll end up drawing the exact same thing again. I don't know why it happens, it just does. So that's why, don't erase first, draw the new one first, then erase the one you don't like. Same thing with the back. I kind of don't like my bump of the back. Don't erase it. I have to draw my new one first. I think I'll just draw a little smoother. Then erase the one you don't like. So now we've got kind of a funny looking snake. We gotta add some arms and legs. We're going to start with the back legs. These big guys down here. So somewhere in the middle of your body, counting the tail, somewhere in the middle here, we're going to add our first kind of curvy rectangle. Just lightly, you'll erase some of these lines later. So let's draw them lightly so it'll be easy to erase. After you have this curvy rectangle, then we'll add the knee in front, just a little angle right there, a little bump. And we'll go down a little bit, maybe about the same length as your rectangle. We'll put it down there again.
And on the back is where we're going to have all the muscles. So that's going to be your calf muscle bulging out and comes down to a skinny ankle. Then I'll erase all the lines that are inside my leg so that I can see my finished shape. And again, you might look at your leg and go, oh, I don't like it. I think it's too, too fat. Don't erase it. Draw your new one first. Then you can erase the one you don't want. Then we're going to add this really long foot. So I have my little heel here. Make a long kind of dragon style foot. And we're going to add some toes, some more spikes. You can put two or three, that's up to you. I'm going to put three this time. Let me zoom in a little closer, you can see better. And then I'll add curved line where I separate the yellow of the toes from the green of the toes. We're going to separate that off. I need curved lines to do that. And then we're going to have a little bump of skin that looks a little bit like a ring wrapping right around those toes. Then we're going to draw another back leg, but because it's behind this one, we don't have to draw as much. We just have to draw another leg coming out from behind here and make it bump right into that front leg. Then it'll probably stick out the back a little bit, so we'll maybe have this part, this little heel sticking out there, going more down. And ending in some more toes, toe claws. Thing again, I'm going to separate the yellow part from the green part. Draw my little bumps right over my toes. And then if you can get your eraser in there, we'll erase that little bit of line that goes inside. Then we'll go up and draw the arms. We'll start with the one that's closest to us first. Kind of up near where we had this line from the neck. That kind of connects. I'm just going to draw it super lightly because I'm going to erase it later. Super lightly it connects to right here. the armpit. We'll do a short little line down right for here for his elbow and then go forward. After I have that I can erase that line in the middle. I don't need that one anymore. That was just kind of help me placing where his arm should go.
we're going to keep our lines pretty close together. He's got skinny arms, so I'll put them pretty close together. And when I get them to about even, I'm going to add this little shoulder bump in front. Hey Betsy, yep. uh, can you remind me what can you remind me what anti aliasing aliasing does? Anti aliasing or whatever that's yeah. Pronounced. Let's say you have a pixeled edge like this, and these are really solid pixels, and then these are like half transparency, and you want to do the magic wand. If you have that checked, then the magic wand will take all of it, but if you have it unchecked, it'll only take the dark ones, and it'll leave these. I believe that's what it does. Uh, oh yeah, because I was because in I'm messing around with the um the the new the meta bang. Mm-hmm. And it's like I had that unchecked and when I I had it unchecked and like my lines became very pixelated. Yep. When when I have unchecked. Yep. And we're gonna add three little finger claws on this hand. We're gonna curve it down there. Curve it around there and curve it around there. And you guys have probably guessed, and then we're going to do the same thing, separate the yellow from the green. Add those little bumps. Oh, hey. I can open up viral pack of files in Metabang. Well, that's cool. Just transfer all your drawings over into there. I don't think it's a transfer thing. It's more like I can just open them at, in either one at my pleasure. Oh, like you can open Photoshop files in Fire Alpaca, that kind of thing. That's cool, though. Yeah, I get. Yeah, that's cool. And we've got his other hand, which shows his three fingers and his little thumb down there. So I'm going to draw his arm sticking right out of his chest here because we can't see where it connects on the other side. And I'll start by drawing his thumb as a little sideways raindrop. Curved on one side, pointy on the other. And the same thing we've been doing, a little bump. Connect it right into his arm. Then we've got three fingers. We've got one on top, sticking up. One kind of in the middle. And then one more kind of pointing down. After you get the shape, you know what you're going to do? You're going to separate the yellow from the green. Separate the yellow from the green. And add those rings or little curved lines around to make it more 3D. And if you want to, you can also draw a line to separate his yellow tummy from the green. You can start right up here by the neck and go right underneath his arm here, right underneath his arm. And then behind his leg, it'll go closer, closer, closer to the edge until it finally meets the edge of his tail.
And then we'll go back up and finish his head. I'll keep his arms on camera just in case some of you are still drawing the arms. That's okay. We've already drawn the head in practice. So if you already feel comfortable, go ahead and just draw it. You don't have to wait for me. I'm gonna stick his eye in right above his smile. And then I'll start adding some spikes around his head. Let's say you accidentally put his spikes too high. Let's say we put him way up here. And you go, whoops, I forgot he's supposed to have a dome head. Don't erase it. Draw your new dome head first. Then erase the one you don't want. Any spikes that are pointing straight at you don't have a point, just like your pencil. When I get to here, you can't really see the point anymore. You can just see the black dot, that's it. And we want some bigger spikes on the back. Thinking of those ice cream cones, pointy on one side, rounded on the other. You can also think of them as raindrops. What's ever easier for you to draw. And then the ones on the other side, we can only see a little bit. So those are shorter spikes. I'll make his nose a little taller. While you have pencil, you can always go back and change anything you want. But saw, you can see I drew the new one first, then I came and I erased the one I didn't want. Now let's stick in our soccer ball, or you can make it a basketball or volleyball or whatever other kind of ball you want. I'm going to put it a little bit in front of my dinosaur, so kind of over here. And we'll do that same pattern of pentagons. Just like drawing a house. We've got the roof, some sides, and the floor. And out of every one of these corners, we're going to have a line that comes out wrapping around the soccer ball. And at the end of each one of those lines is another pentagon, little house shape. You can see there's some other stuff here. This is to show where the ball came from. So I have one line that where it's coming to his head, and I've got this little red spark where that's where it hit impact, and then another line to show where it's going next. And you can change the lines to wherever you want. We just have to have that little spark kind of near his head. So I'm going to do a little star. Let me zoom in on that so you can see better. Ooh. Focus, focus. So I just did one little curve line, another little curve line. Go around and around and around. And from the ball, I'm going to do a curved line that flicks right to that star. That's where the ball is going. It hit his head and now it's going somewhere. 
But where did it come from? You can draw whichever way you want for where the ball came from. It can come from on top of your paper, straight down and hit his head before it went off. It could come from someone behind him to the star and then he hit it off. It could have come from someone in front of him and then hit it off. You can put wherever you want this ball to come from. Just have it pointing right to that star. I think I'm going to keep probably the one from the back. You can choose whichever one you like best. And to show that your dinosaur is jumping, we're going to put a little shadow, a little squiggly line below the feet. But down here right at the very bottom of my paper, I'm going to make a squiggly line back and forth, back and forth. That's how you can show that your characters are jumping off the ground because their shadow isn't touching their feet. I'll zoom in on that too so you can see it better. Right, like that. So we only have about six minutes left due to my technical difficulties of not making sure my microphone was working. So you can go ahead and get colored pencils or markers, whatever you like in color. It doesn't have to be green. Scientists don't really know what color dinosaurs were, so they could have been pink or purple or rainbow or striped or spotted or anything you like. You can color it however you want. And if you have any questions, I will be here for the next six minutes. And after that, we'll take a look at some of your drawings. Just three more minutes left and then we'll take a look at some of your drawings.
And then before we leave, if somebody from Roxanne's computer can let me know the names of everybody who drew today, that would be awesome. This program is run by government grants and we do report attendance on how many people are benefiting from these programs. So it would really help us out if you just let me know the names of everybody who drew with us today. You can do it in the chat box if you like. And that's the end of our time together. So I know you guys are probably still coloring and still working, but if you want to show your work in progress, that would be awesome. Oh, hey, I can show you something. Sure, let me double check. I was messing around with the, you know, the yeah, program. Go for it. Yeah, I've been messing around with Metabang Paint, the free one the free one mm -hmm. and oh look at that little pack yourself I just us. messed around with cute yeah so far it works yeah it works pretty well the program overall yeah do you find it like easier to use than yeah. yeah. oh it has grids too that's cool I was gonna say I can't give up my grids from Fire Alpaca. Yeah, but... Nice. Yeah, it's like it works pretty well. Yeah, it's like there are little things that are different from it that I feel like if I just messed around with settings, I could get to where where I like them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's overall it works great. Ten cool, out of ten. Cool. How about Frank? So let me go ahead and spotlight Frank's video. Hey, look at that. You got a big one. <laughs> nice. Is that brown ink or is it just not showing up as black on my monitor? This thing is just a monitor. Just a monitor? Oh, okay. Still pretty cool. And I'm supposed to remind all you guys as soon as your artwork is done, if you'd like to have it in the art show, go ahead and email it to teamjli at gmail.com. Anything from the Cortez? I saw a whole group of you in there, so I'm not sure how many are actually drawing. Betsy, it's me, Donovan. Just you, Donovan? You're the only one who drew today? No, uh, we were... We were, you guys were, we already like, you already guys, never mind, I can't talk, but uh, some, my friends were doing it. Oh, okay, can I get the names of your friends real quick? Uh, there's Jordan. Mm hmm Joel. Okay. Reese. And Reese, got it, thank you. And Dylan. And Dylan, all right. And those guys are all siblings, or they are like you guys are having a big friends' day. <laughs> uh, the Joel, Jordan, and Reese are siblings. Dylan's my brother. Oh, okay, got it, got it. That Dylan. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anybody want to show their work? 
Uh, we didn't really get to do it because uh, you guys were going a little too fast. Uh, sorry about that. It's okay. So we just like drew like we just drew our own dinosaurs. I just knelt. Yeah, uh, hey, just a, a quick, uh, a, a quick Hey, Michaela. Thing. Hey, Donovan. Um, Bet, like, if you say, if you tell Betsy she's going too fast for you, she can and will slow down for you and, like, show you, like, the step. Yeah, you did let me know, but I think I just <laughs> have a built-in speed or something like that. But it's hard, too, when you've got, like, different... Yeah, <laughs> trying to follow it. Everybody works at different speeds. But anyway, thank you guys very much for drawing with me. I have to go and start the next class. Okay. So, okay. Hope to see your finished dinosaurs, even if they're not the ones I drew. Bye. Bye.